I'm joined now by Congressman Mike Flood from the 1st District. Congressman, thank you for taking a few minutes today. Hey, thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. Um, winner take all, that's the topic here in Nebraska and really now across the country, that one vote out in the 2nd District could play a major role when it comes to the presidential election. You're at the forefront uh, of the effort, perhaps, to try to get things changed to a winner-take-all uh, situation here in Nebraska with a potential special session in the near future, we'll see. Uh, but can you talk to us, one, just about the effort and where that comes from and where we're at right now on your end? Sure, you know, for 125 years, from the day that Nebraska became a state until 1992, we allocated our electoral votes under a winner-take-all system like 48 other states. Democrats and liberal Republicans worked together to change our system in 1992 in a nakedly partisan ploy to advantage the Democratic candidate for president. So I've been working on this for over 20 years. Let's think of it this way. If every state allocated electoral votes like Nebraska and Maine, Mitt Romney would have defeated Barack Obama in 2012. If every state had our system, Republican presidential candidates would have an advantage. But that's the point. Democrats don't want our system everywhere. They just want it in Nebraska so they can have the chance to take one more electoral vote away from the majority of Nebraskans. So as I see it, Nebraska voters deserve to speak with one voice in our presidential election, just like the voters of California, New York, and 46 other states. This is about restoring an even playing field and getting back to a system that worked well for Nebraska for 125 years. That's fair. Uh, to take the other side, the, the, there are people probably in Omaha right now, certain people, maybe of a certain political persuasion that may say, well, wait a minute, I've had a voice for 32 years. Why do you want to take that away from me? Well, we should have the same voice as all the other uh, states. Is, is California sharing their Republican districts uh, with us? Is California sending us even one uh, to support the Republican position? No, they're not. Uh, you know, a long time ago, uh, it seems like it, uh, 20 plus years ago, uh, we changed the license plate system in Nebraska where a couple of big counties got the alphanumeric and we got, the, we got to keep our, our numbered system. And it has always bothered me. If we are a state, then let's speak with one voice. Now, that doesn't mean I'm giving up my seven on my plate. That means that we should figure out a way to have the same system. Uh, this only breeds more of the urban-rural divide. We should be on the same page. We should speak with one voice. We're a small state. We've got five votes. The majority of Nebraskans have elected Donald Trump in 2016 and 2020. It should be the same thing this year. All five votes should go to the person uh, that's running for president that gets a majority of the state's votes. Is there a concern, and I'm going to stick with the Obama area because obviously that's kind of what is impacted the most specifically based on where we're at because as the registrations tell us, third district and first district will probably go a certain way. Second is more of that purple blue dot type situation. Do you see this effort impacting any politicians in Omaha? And I'm specifically meaning your colleague, Congressman Don Bacon, or anyone running for mayor or anyone running for state Senate, adversely affecting or maybe helping in this situation, if this changes or doesn't in the whole conversation? Well, I mean, people need to know Don Bacon, just like every other member of the federal delegation, we have all signed a letter urging this change to support Governor Pillen's efforts and Speaker Arch. Uh, so Don supports this. He has been for this. I have been for this for 20 years. And um, I'd also add that uh, Gene Stothert, the mayor of Omaha, supports this. So, you know, at the end of the day, this is a policy decision for the state of Nebraska. Uh, we feel, and I have felt for 20 years that this should get changed. If this looming election gets the change that we've been looking for for 20 years to go back to the system we had for 125 years, then I think that's a perfect outcome. Uh, but I think it's important. I don't think that candidates for Congress or mayor or uh, governor would support something that isn't in the best interest of you know um, their party and uh, the state. So at the end of the day, I think this is the right thing, and so does Don Bacon, and I think that says a lot about where we're going. 
Uh, earlier today, I had a chance to talk to State Senator Merv Rippey about the whole situation. He was in the room. I believe you were there too with Lindsey Graham and the whole conversation there on Wednesday at the governor's mansion. He said at this point on Sunday, he does not believe there are votes enough to make it worth calling a special session. Do you believe that we, you will reach that goal? I do, you know, I can count just like everybody else. And, and today, uh, knowing where the votes are, I, I think it's very close, but I don't think there are 33 today. We'll see if that changes. Uh, this is always fluid, but uh, he's probably right. How, how fast would a special, you're a former state senator, you know how this system works. How fast would a special session need to be called to be effective? Can it go run right up to election day? Does, does it need to be done before early voting happens? Where would, where do you stand on that? It's my understanding under the law, it can be called, uh, if the system is put in place before the election, it can be, uh, the law can be changed right up to the election. Obviously the sooner the better, this would require 33 votes with the emergency clause to make it immediately effective. So uh, there is an urgency here to get this done. Uh, one of the criticisms I'm sure you've heard uh, is the timing of this conversation. This bill, that I, or a version of this bill, uh, State Senator Lauren Lippincott had had, it had trouble getting out of committee in regular session. The attention wasn't there in January or February or March, at least not publicly. Now it is, we're getting a lot closer to the election. Some people are saying, well, wait a minute, if it couldn't get out of a committee in regular session, why does it deserve a special session all of a sudden with a light shined on it at the end of September? What do you say to those folks? Well, I think there's a renewed momentum. Uh, you know, more Nebraskans are reaching out, uh, wanting their member of uh, the legislature to make a change. I think that's one. Uh, number two, I think uh, nationally, this is coming into focus. Uh, this is a very unique time to be in the Nebraska legislature. I spent 10 years there, and I can tell you, I can't think of an issue that would resonate more or be more uh, relevant to the national conversation than this right now. It reminds me of the 2011 effort uh, to reroute the Keystone XL pipeline where Nebraska was really at the, at the uh, crosshairs of what everybody was talking about in terms of energy policy. Uh, so at the end of the day, uh, what an interesting time to be in the legislature, what an important issue and an opportunity to speak with one voice as Nebraskans. And uh, I, I think that all of the state senators are probably hearing from folks in their district about what would be the best next step. Um, hopefully they uh, come to the conclusion that making this change is in the best interest of our state. Have you heard from any state senators personally that may have said anything about having, feeling like they have too much undue pressure being put on them, uh, you know, being a person that makes 12 grand a year at this position that you did for 10 years and now being looked at like you need to get this done and I realize I'll, I'll put this in here uh, I talked to Senator Rippey and he talked about the conversation with former President Trump and it was on speakerphone in the room and he mentioned that it was very positive there was no pressure necessarily put on by the former president just talking about the issue but have you heard any comments from any state senators about feeling like their backs up against the wall or there's extra pressure on them? Well, not as much. You know, I was in the legislature for 10 years. The folks in there have dealt with issues, quite honestly, that are stickier than this one. Uh, anytime you're, you're debating uh, moral issues like the death penalty or abortion or, um, you know, incarceration issues, uh, prison issues, you know, these, are, these are the types of things state senators deal with. This is an election issue. This is a, similar to redistricting. Um, this is not a moral issue. This is not uh, the death penalty. And so I, I have a lot of respect for what state senators do. I know that job. I've done it. I've talked to the folks that are in there doing it right now. And quite honestly, I think Nebraskans would be surprised with the kind of issues they deal with on a daily basis. And so uh, while this may be in the news right now, I certainly don't think it is one of the, the tougher moral issues that they've dealt with throughout their career in the legislature. It's good to know. Uh, one other question, and I'll let you get out of here on this. Would this be an issue if the Trump campaign wasn't concerned about that one vote? Are they worried, do you know, I'm not saying to put words in their mouth, but do you know if they are concerned that Kamala Harris could take that one vote if this does not change? 
Absolutely. I mean, I think, well, we have to look at the implications in the broader picture and how does this relate to the rest of the United States. The difference between Donald Trump and Kamala Harris is the difference between uh, Iran not getting a bomb and Iran having the bomb, uh, the atomic bomb, the, the nuclear weapon. Uh, in my opinion, uh, our adversaries around the world don't fear Kamala Harris, just like they didn't fear Joe Biden. Our withdrawal from Afghanistan resulting in 13 fatalities and untold injuries and how many fatalities inside Afghanistan, leaving people that were working for us stranded with the Taliban and a plane taking off with people clutching to the wheels, sent the message around the world that America does not stand for freedom like it used to. It doesn't stand for our allies. And so when it comes down to this one electoral vote, I think it's pretty simple. Do you want somebody that had things under control when he was the president of the United States in foreign policy? Iran uh, didn't have the, the resources that they have now, that they've made $80 billion since he left office uh, selling their oil? Or do you want uh, Kamala Harris to be in that seat? And we can see a deterioration of our world influence every single day. So for me, yeah, this is a binary choice. This is black and white. This is Trump versus Kamala Harris. And if Nebraska can take one small step and return to the way we did it for a better part the for 125 years, I think it's the right thing to do. And I've been for this for 20 years. This doesn't have, you know, th this isn't a change in my position or really a change in the great majority of members of the legislature's position. John Lowe and Carney is for this. There's a bunch of people across the state that want this. We simply need to get to 33 votes. And sorry, I have one more follow up to that. Do, do you think there's a reason why it's taken this long? You, you talked about for 20 years. I know Senator Ricketts, he was on Hannity with you the other night, uh, talked about him wanting and trying to do this while he was governor. It obviously did not happen. It's been there since 92. Why do you think that it's still there? Why do you think that it hasn't gotten across the finish line, say, in a regular session along the way? Well, you know, I can tell you a lot of sessions have a lot of hot topics and, you know, when you're just one or two votes away and you, you're dealing with property tax relief and you're dealing with overcrowded prisons and you're dealing with abortion and the state budget and uh, tax policy, you know, everything seems to take a back seat when you when you are one or two votes away from something like this. And, and this may just be uh, the situation where it makes sense to, to finally get it done and be be done with this experiment. Uh, it's important to know that when this was sold to members of the legislature back in 1992, the, the pitch was, hey, if we do this, all the other states will do this, and we'll be on an even playing field. Well, the experiment is over. It didn't work. Now Nebraska is, is, uh, is out there with just Maine, and uh, we are doing it differently than all the other states, and it's a matter of fairness. And do you believe Maine should go ahead and flip theirs too and just make all 50 the same? I do. I mean, if I were in Maine, but you know what? Ultimately, I believe in states' rights. That's a state's choice. If they want to do it that way, good for them. We in Nebraska have to focus on what we're doing here, and the experiment in my book has ended. It's time to go back and speak with one voice. Congressman Mike Flood, I appreciate all the time that you've given me today, a lot of the insight there and your take on stuff. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Thanks for having me.